Most of us vaguely remember the Pythagorean theorem, a formula that uses the fundamental relationship between the three sides of a right triangle. Just thinking about it, you're probably already rolling your eyes in boredom, forced back into your dreadful high school classroom, wondering why any of this is useful at all. Whether or not that's the case, the guy behind this theorem was absolutely insane. He was sent by gods to the benefit of humankind and may have been the son of Apollo. He had superpowers that included taming animals and writing words on the moon, and he possessed a magical golden arrow that he used to fly around. Or so he says. This is Pythagoras, the philosopher who created a cult. I'm proud to announce that this video is sponsored by Surfshark. These days I pretty much live my whole life on the internet. Despite the convenience, two big issues seem to come up time and time again. For one, I need to do a lot of research and sometimes because of where I am, I can't access certain sites. Secondly, it seems like every day there's news about where my data is being sold or shared or how I could be hacked. Thankfully, to solve all these issues and more, there's Surfshark VPN. Surfshark lets you virtually place your favorite devices anywhere in the world. In fact, Surfshark lets you access up to 15 different Netflix libraries. Secondly, Surfshark VPN protects your IP address and uses the same encryption technology as the US government. This guarantees that your personal data will remain for your eyes only, even when using public Wi-Fi. Go ahead and use my code Sisyphus to get 83% off, if that's not already a great deal. Using this code also gives you 3 extra months free. And if you're unsure if Surfshark is what you're looking for, they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Click on the link in the description below. Little is truly known about Pythagoras' life, except for brief and satirical works. What we do know is that he was born in Samos, a beautiful Greek island that was well known for its engineering and out-of-this-world festival experience. Early in his life, Pythagoras likely left to pursue his education in ancient Egypt. There he learned to speak Egyptian from none other than the pharaoh himself. He would also travel to Crete, where he would learn astronomy, although many suggest that Pythagoras came to many of his brilliant ideas while traveling. Some, such as Antonius Diogenes, argue that he instead discovered his ideas through his dreams. Back in Samos, Pythagoras would use his newfound knowledge to establish a school called the Semicircle. There, his students would discuss matters of public concern. Despite the popularity of the school, Pythagoras spent much of his career dwelling in a secret cave. At the age of 40, Pythagoras would leave to Croton and flex his charm to climb the political ranks. This allowed him to serve as an advisor for the elites and orate to the public over issues he deemed important. Some believe that the speeches of Pythagoras were so compelling that at one point he motivated the people of Croton to leave their material wealth and embrace a purer and more simplistic lifestyle. Of course, this influence wasn't enough for Pythagoras. He soon developed a monastery where he was treated like a god. He named his followers Pythagoreans, and they would have to spend five years in silence before they were accepted. Within his group of followers, there were two classes, the learners and the listeners. The learners could intellectualize, investigate science, and meet with Pythagoras face to face. The listeners, who believed in mysticism and numerology, could only meet Pythagoras hidden behind a curtain. No matter what class you were, you had to follow the customs of Pythagoreanism. Some were quite nice, such as exercise and therapeutic dancing, and some were more specific, such as the rule that you cannot walk on public roads. Vegetarianism was another practice of the monastery, although this has been somewhat debated. But one of the strangest was Pythagoras' rule that one should never touch a fava bean. According to him, the internal liquids and gases of the human body are sacred, Eating something like a bean causes gas, and flatulence unfortunately removes most of the grade of life. As Pythagoras states then, eating fava beans and gnawing on the heads of one's parents are one and the same. If any Pythagoreans disobeyed, the monastery would go through the trouble of building a tombstone for them and acting as if they had died. Of course, this didn't stop his followers from creating stories where Pythagoras is literally the coolest guy in ancient Greece. For example, Pythagoras supposedly had a golden thigh that he showed off to everybody while at the Olympics. He had also been reincarnated so many times before. Before his life as Pythagoras, he was a humble fisherman. At one point, he was a beautiful Cartesian who had slept with a large number of wealthy men. The best story of all, however, is when Pythagoras decided to go on a boating trip with the fellow mathematician Hippasus. 
who showed Pythagoras his proof for the existence of an irrational number. Pythagoras, seeing this to be heresy, grabbed his friend and held his head underwater until he went lifeless, and then threw his body overboard. Pythagoras himself would soon meet his own fate, as his cult grew far too powerful. After Croton beat a neighboring colony, parts of the population suggested to have a little democracy in their town, which Pythagoras promptly rejected. Then the townsfolk launched an assault while the Pythagoreans were having a meeting and set their building on fire. In a famous retelling of this event, Pythagoras was able to escape and was chased by the attackers. Unfortunately, he soon ended up in a difficult situation. Nope, he wasn't chased towards a cliff or a bridge. Pythagoras found himself face to face with a field of fava beans. Knowing that he could not touch these beans, Pythagoras stood there and died. The whole Pythagorean movement is largely based on the idea that math was a religious experience. They believed that numbers were behind the entire universe. Because of this valuing of numbers, the numbers themselves were seen as gods. Seven was wisdom, eight was justice, and ten was of course the most sacred of all. This is evident in the Tectractus, a triangle with ten points, which acted as the symbol for the organization of the entire universe. Ten was also given a special prayer, and all members had to swear an oath to the sacred triangle. Some, however, have argued that the Pythagoreans had only ever engaged in proofless arithmetic. Although this makes them look more like crazy number-worshipping mystics than rational mathematicians, many of their discoveries are still considered to be important contributions. Another belief, more specific to Pythagoras, was his embrace of metempsychosis, the idea that all souls are immortal and that after you die your soul is transferred to a new body. This belief would be reflected later in Plato's own mystical treatment of the soul existing in a largely material world. Some have even argued that Plato borrowed his own tripartite theory of the soul from the Pythagorean idea of the soul. Mysticism was another important component to the beliefs of Pythagoras. This is reflected in the idea behind the harmony of spheres. Pythagoras believed that all of the celestial bodies moved in accordance to certain mathematical equations. These equations then correspond to musical notes that produce a beautiful, although inaudible, symphony. This embrace of math and abstract thought as a basis for philosophical thought is considered to have inspired Plato's own embrace of rationalism over empiricism. Additionally, the cult of the Pythagoreans are thought to have inspired Plato's own utopian concept of the Republic. In some ways, Pythagoras was one of the largest influences on Plato, a philosopher who has been considered to be the most influential Western philosopher in history. However, the question remains as to whether or not society would have been better off if we had stayed away from fava beans. Mm -hmm.